take a girl and a guy, and they fall madly in love and form a family. Sprinkle in some counseling degrees and a doctorate, a dream of transforming relationships as we know it. And 20 years later, we give you power couple Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. And this is their podcast, Couples Synergy. Welcome back to another episode of Couples Synergy with Dr. Ray and Jean. Hi, I'm Dr. Ray. And I'm Jean. And this is our podcast about love, marriage, and relationships. Please check us out online on our Facebook page and Instagram at Couple Synergy or our website, couplesynergy.com. And be sure to subscribe to our podcast or send us any suggestions on topics you'd like to hear more about. And now on to Couple Synergy, an in-depth look at love, marriage, and relationships, where we bring you our experience helping thousands of couples transform their relationships for over 20 years. You know, everyone says you should work on your relationship, but nobody teaches us how. So we've created this podcast to teach people what they can do to create the relationship they've always dreamed of. With the partner they fell in love with. Like so, you. Yeah. So how are, <laughs> how are you doing? I'm good. Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you doing? How are you doing? Uh, today, we are talking about flirting. <laughs> yes. Wink, wink. Nudge, nudge. Hey. So I was going to read a, a review. Oh, yeah. Okay. Before we get into uh, the topic. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to hear a review. That'd be cool to hear uh, what people are saying out there. Um, this one is from Magnetic Mismatch. Mm. That sounds like hopefully they found a partner that they seem as a mismatch, but it works <laughs> for them and it's magnetic. And it's magnetic. They said, real wisdom. Very interesting listening to different real life couples talking about real life experiences. It's definitely not like the always rainbows and butterflies, LOL. Mm. With over two decades of, decades of experience, my wife and I are looking forward to listening in for more pieces of wisdom that we can implement as well. Subscribed. That's awesome. Yeah. Talk about magnetic. Mm-hmm. We're talking about flirting today. <laughs> you know, and I just want to highlight that, you know, every Tuesday night we go live yeah. on, on YouTube and on Facebook. Right. Um. And this is an opportunity, if you do have questions for us, you can ask us directly, we'll answer them on air. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of a different format because you can see us. and um, But we still can't see you. Yeah, we can't see you. But if you, <laughs> if you do make comments, we can respond. Yeah. And it's kind of fun. You right. know, it's a little different than this where we're just kind of talking in the ethers right now. And then, you know, a couple of days from now or whenever you'll hear it. Mm-hmm. But that's real time. So join us on Tuesday nights, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. And that's on Facebook, mm-hmm. on our Facebook page, and also our YouTube channel. Couple Synergy. Couple Synergy, right. Yeah, yeah. we were talking, what, last, last Tuesday on the live call that we have no idea who is listening. Right. But a lot of people are, and that's what's yeah. kind of fun is um, we're quoted a lot. So we hear it later. Or in strange places, like at parties. So, yeah, you know, we don't really get to hear feedback, you know, too often from people. So when we get the reviews, it's really awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, When people, you know, ask questions or interact with us on our live calls, um, that's great. That's really awesome because then we can get some feedback. But we're also a week out from our weekend intensive right that we just held we haven't talked about that yet and it was just talk about magnetic and fantastic Mm -hmm. it was really wonderful to be you know in person with people oh it was wonderful and be able to you know really just teach these couples some amazing skills and tools and you know i i think one of the most awesomest quotes i don't know if that's a word awesomest i'm making it a word but one of the the coolest quotes that we heard was i came home with a brand new marriage yeah with a whole new marriage Mm -hmm. right and that just it was so powerful to hear that and rewarding 
you know, for us on our part, because we put a lot into this, you know, a lot into this weekend intensive and it was a major dream and it ended up being better than we could possibly have imagined. Yeah. And we accomplished what we really wanted to accomplish. You know, the idea of couple to couple and working directly with a couple, we've been doing that forever. Mm -hmm. Right. And what we noticed is, you know, you, you can work on this an hour a week and you under understand yourself at a different level, but you're going right back into your life. And so it unravels as you're trying to change. Right. So you don't have that intensity of time where you're really infused in staying in it with your partner for a long period of time, like four days. Right. And because of that, there's a, a whole different level of connection and healing that comes up and flirting is a big part of it. Mm. And so if you look at, you know, we just got some of the footage back from the video from the weekend and it just looks like a blast and it was a blast it was. and it sort of seems like cheating. Like how is that working on your relationship? You know, having fun and doing wine tastings or whatever, but it's all part of, you know, engaging in the sensuality of life, in the things that are beyond just informational, logical conversations and playing and being playful and connecting in that awakens us at a whole different level. There was definitely a lot of playfulness that happened over the weekend. And, you know, what Gene's talking about is absolutely important, you know, to incorporate play into your relationship because if you're not having fun together then you're not making deposits in the account and you can't it can't withstand a withdrawal when you're trying to deal with the big ticket items and those really deep conversations that you know couples have when they're dealing with problems so play is is an investment you know it is a connection that is fun you you guys remember when you first started dating and you would have fun together do silly stuff right right you know there's no space for it and that was another intention of the weekend is to create that space mm -hmm. and get rid of all the distractions and just dive into okay what's next and something new and something different and something fun and you know watching tv is what people consider fun now and it's Fun in a way that is structured by whatever you're watching. What someone else wants you to experience emotionally, the story they're telling, but you're not creating your own story. You're not creating your own experience. So I was listening to some guy, I can't remember where I was listening to this, and he was talking about playing catch, mm -hmm. like literally with a ball, throwing a ball back and forth, and how that engages you know, your physical body and this opportunity for anything to happen a risk like getting hit in the face <laughs> with the ball and if you're playing a video game you you don't have that you know the worst thing that's going to happen is oh you know i air quotes died and have to respawn but it's not it's not real you didn't feel the pain of anything you didn't go through really an emotional anything that bonds you with another person like you do when you do something physical with that person. Yeah, there's no challenge in it. No. And you can't really feel successful at the end because there really wasn't a challenge that you went through, you know, to reap that reward. I remember when we were dating mm -hmm. and you were working and I created a video for you. Do you remember that video? Mm-hmm. <laughs> And it's like, there's so much fun in creating a surprise for your partner and then thinking about them getting the surprise. Because when you finally got it, I wasn't even there. Because then I think I went to school or something. I don't know. And so I'm having fun creating it. You're having fun discovering it. And then we're having fun talking about each of our experiences with it later on. And those are the things that we forget to do when we've been together a long time. That Yeah, you it, start to take things for granted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And life seems to kind of get in the way. And I think you start taking life way too seriously. 
that's one of the parts that we etched out time for on the weekend was dress up. So the couples got to dress up, but they had to get ready in separate spaces. And usually you're getting ready, your partner's there, you're stressed out, you've got a deadline, you got to get out the door, you know, I'm trying to find jewelry, you're like, let's go, I'm looking for some finishing touches. And there's never that moment where they have in all the movies where the lady walks down the stairs and the gentleman is at the bottom of the stairs like, wow, you look wonderful. Yeah, I think they just only have that on shows like The Bachelor or something like that. Right. But. So we did allow for a space like that where, mm-hmm. you know, and that's what happened when you didn't live together. When you didn't live together, there was that moment where you first saw each other and there was a lot of preparation that went into, you know, what we're going to wear. Even if it was a casual day, you were going to you were going to be cute. You were well, going to take a shower. I think another <laughs> important part of this exercise that we did with couples was that too often, we don't get dressed up for each other anymore. Right. We're getting dressed up for a function or an event or, you know, someone else's wedding, but we're not getting dressed up for our partner. And so this really put a spotlight on that in really being cognizant of, you know, being there for your partner and dressing up for them and really highlighting the bond between the two of them. I think it was just all around an amazing, amazing event. Mm -hmm. And we are going to be hosting another one Mm -hmm. in the same venue because the venue was perfect. Yeah. It was absolutely perfect. Um, We're going to be hosting another one on September 9th through the 12th. And we are going to be opening up tickets pretty soon for that. And we are going to keep it small. So make sure if this is something you're interested in that you register soon. We are not going to open it up and have a really big event because we just can't accomplish what we want to accomplish and we want to maintain the integrity of that. Yeah, this isn't just like a conference no. or a seminar uh-uh. that you kind of audit. Personal. Yeah, absolutely. This is very personal mm-hmm. and you know, there's a lot of attention to detail throughout this this whole event. Which is, you know, back to flirting. And flirting has these layers to it, right? And it's not just like a compliment. And especially if there's a lot of thought that goes into it. You were quite a practical joker. I kind of still am sometimes. Well, you know, it's just the two of us in the house. <laughs> But, you know, when the kids lived here, especially Angie, you would always pop out a corner uh-huh. and scare her. Oh, or you'd, something. you'd always have these ideas. Oh, I'm going to go do this. And, and right. when, you know, with the, with the boys, too, you've always had like, mm-hmm. you know, those fun ways of waking them up in the morning, which I don't know if they thought were so fun, but they certainly remember <laughs> those fun things. And it just adds a different layer of something in our lives. And something we really smile about and reminisce about. And we just don't do enough of that flirting. I mean, there's couples that don't even exchange presents. Yeah. You know, they just see themselves as so one that they don't relate, which means there's a space between. I think the worst is when couples, they give the list, you know, Uh, to their partner. If you want to get me a present, these are the things. With our money. Right. It's... (laughs) (laughs) Well, typically those couples, they have separate bank accounts. I wonder if that's like... The same thing as going, hey, as long as you're going to the store, can you pick up some milk? Right. Only it's, you know, I, I'd really it like this pair of shoes. loses all of the meaning. Of the thoughtfulness. Yeah. And the paying attention and the surprise and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, you, you'll hear us talk about this a lot. You got to celebrate. You got to flirt. You got to have a good time. Those are all really important relationship skills. Mm-hmm. Relationship behaviors, I would relationship say. Relationship behaviors. Mm-hmm. Like good hygiene. Good relationship hygiene. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it's funny. If I'm writing an email or something, I will put in all the nuts and bolts, all the left brain part of the email. And then I have to go back and, and remind myself to say, hello, hello. And how are you doing? Hope everything is well. Happy New Year or whatever is 
around right now, like adding in the pleases and the thank yous and the personal touches, because it's so easy just to do the bullet points and hey, you know, the da da da. And I think that's how we get really stale in our relationship by just being good functional business partners and losing, you know, the salt and pepper, the flavor. So there is something that kind of came up on the weekend that we should talk about as part of the topic of flirting. Mm -hmm. How do you know the difference between your spouse flirting with you or actually initiating sex? Oh, that's a great question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it, it tends to lean in one direction, right? Where it's usually the guy that is giving off a signal mm -hmm. that feels like to the women, because we had this conversation in our breakout group, that, uh-oh, he wants something. Right. I'm in the middle of doing dishes. He's all handsy. And I really just want to get the dishes done. Mm. I think that's a, a really good question to talk about because I think the men also would want to know the difference. Well, you know, one of the suggestions I had for the women is start doing it to him. <laughs> because when I do it to you, you find it annoying as well. Uh, the, sure, if I'm in the middle of something, mm -hmm. or you know, like my especially my cooking bacon, you have to <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> cooking bacon. Yeah, that could be dangerous. So you know, when you are in one mind frame, and then someone flirt, you know, you flirt with me, right? Your brain has to shift. Yes. And if you are like focused on a thought and you're focused on what you're doing, you know, for your brain to shift like that, it could be irritating or annoying, especially if you're annoyed already mm -hmm. with whatever task you're doing. Um, that can be very jarring, I think, for people. And so I can see how, you know, if men are the ones that are doing it more often, I can see how women would have an issue with it, mm -hmm. right? So then the question from guys would be like, well, then when? When is a good time to flirt? And then how do I make the distinction between, hey, I'm just flirting with you or, you know, B, I'm actually wanting to start something I think sexual? It, I think it has a lot to do with reading what's happening and showing up in a way that you want to give and not take. So if your partner's doing the dishes and you want to connect with them, maybe you should help with the dishes. Maybe that would be the way to connect and start a conversation and then you can bump into them or whatever, but they're going to feel supported in what they're doing and not, oh, here's one more thing on my list I have to take care of. I'm taking care of the dishes and I got to go take care of you instead of joining them in with whatever they're working on. You know, sometimes like for you, I can't really join you in, in your work because usually doing something with a computer and I don't know what you're doing stuff, <laughs> but I can bring you, you know, a cup of tea or I can um, do something that makes you more comfortable or, you know, maybe massage your neck or something like that. That is not me wanting something from you, but literally giving to you. And I think that's the flavor of flirting that is the opening, right? Because we talked about the concept of what shuts you down and what opens you up. Right. What is the thing that makes you unfold and want to have more connection with your partner and what makes you shrink away and be like, oh, one more thing I got to do. And it can be, sorry guys, the exact same behavior. It yes. is very confusing. Very confusing. And it could be a, a totally different Wait, experience one day than it another. It worked yesterday, so why won't it work today? I don't get it. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I know you'd like a lovely list of exactly how you should do stuff. That would be ideal. A nice yeah. little, you know, pamphlet yeah. um, that has all the list of, of things that you can do. And you just go down a list and check it off. Yeah, can you go to the store and get me some milk? <laughs> right. That's what it feels like. You know, it doesn't feel like the thoughtfulness. 
the reaching across, the, hey, I see you and how can I join you in your life? And when you add playfulness to that, you know, if you're helping with the dishes and you bring over a few things and you did something like, I don't know, oh, I'm just loading the dishwasher and then maybe tease me like you're going to put me in the dishwasher. That's maybe sounds mean Dude, instead sounds of fun. sounds terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like you make some type of joke or something like that. Um, then you're like, ha ha, and you're in your head you've gotten like a burst of dopamine and you're laughing, but you're not feeling torn. Like, okay, as soon as I get this done, I'll come and take care of you. It's more like you're joining in whatever activity that's happening and you're adding an element of playfulness. And, you know, this is something I remember being in the military is that, you know, they, it would always be, something really difficult, you know, like they'd wake you up at three in the morning and run you around and make you have breakfast and put you on a bus and get you out to wherever you're supposed to go. And then you'd have to sit there for like three hours and do nothing because they, wherever they were taking you, like the the range or something wasn't ready. Nobody nobody was ready for you. And so you just sit there and you don't know what's going on because, you know, you're in basic training. You have no idea what's going on. You're sitting there waiting. And that's when we would have the most fun. Because you're sitting there waiting and you're frustrated and then someone starts telling a story or a joke or messing around or whatever it is. And then you create, you create those moments. And it's that kind of stuff in the mundaneness of life that adds that flavor that we're talking about that lends to more bonding and connecting than just being good soldiers getting the job done. So you should really think about flirting as joining your partner, connecting with your partner versus disconnecting, or right? Taking. Or taking yeah. or shifting away from, you know, what is what it is that they're doing. Mm-hmm. So that I, I think that's that's a really good point. You know, like if, you know, someone's folding the laundry, you know, then you come in and you join and you start folding the laundry too. And maybe you throw a pair of underwear at them, you know, just <laughs> something fun like that. Yeah. It's part of that, that joining process. Mm-hmm. And, and now it's bringing much more energy to the relationship versus taking away. I was listening to Greg Braden today on our hike and he was talking about being alive on this planet and we, our time is limited and how do you use the time we have here to the most, right? So he's a very active social, uh, he's a very active public speaker. He writes books, he speaks on different topics. And he said in there, you know, sometimes I'm rushing from being done with a lecture to having to go do a book signing or having something else on my schedule and someone will come up to talk to him. And his first reaction is like, Oh, I'm busy. I can't. And he goes, you know, and and he remembers, wait a minute, I'm here. I'm on earth in this body having this experience and I'm going to stop and I'm going to look at this person and I'm going to let them know I'm going to focus on you for the next minute. And then I got to go because I'm busy, but I'm going to be really present and here with you right now. And it's so easy for us to miss those moments, those moments that we can never get back Those are our biggest regrets when we're done. When the relationships end is those things that we didn't do. What is that, a Bruno Mars song, like I should have bought you flowers? (laughs) Something to that effect. Yep. But yeah, it really puts a focus on what's really important. And And it it is the time, you know, with our partner and being in that moment with them, you know, versus just rushing off to something else. And so, yeah, you know, that, that's a great example with Greg Braden. And, you know, take a moment to send a funny text or a flirty text, a flirty text. It, you know, on the weekend, we we did an exercise that was from the Adventure Challenge. And the Adventure Challenge is they have a book for couples. And, you know, it is. It's kind of like ideas for date night. Mm-hmm. 
And it really is an awesome resource for people. So if you're looking for ways to flirt, if you're looking for ways to bring, you know, just that nuance and excitement into your relationship, this would be a really great idea starter. Yeah. For couples. So you can get that adventure challenge. Yeah. If you go to uh, the adventure challenge dot com, you can pick up that book. Um, it's it's really cool the way that they structured it. You just you kind of you do a scratch off. Um, it tells you how much money it's going to cost if it's going to be a little expensive or it's going to be you know not much money at all. And then you're free. Sc- you're free and you can scratch it off and then you guys you know do it together. Yeah, whatever's what, whatever the suggestion is. <laughs> Some really really great ideas. And like I said, we used one of those exercises on our weekend intensive mm-hmm. and the couples had a blast doing it. Um, so if you go to the adventure challenge.com slash discount slash couple synergy, you'll get 10% off the purchase of that. That's awesome. Can you say that again? Yeah. Adventure. The, the, ad, the, you gotta have the, the in there, the, the adventure, the adventure challenge.com slash discount slash couple synergy and it will apply that discount code uh, at the end at the checkout page fabulous so yeah that's a we've done some other things it's been really fun it's a way to get new energy into your relationship because i don't know sometimes we're too tired to get creative and so why not let something more random well you know when you're when you're in your life day in and day out you you tend to cut a rut and that's naturally what we do we as human beings we create routines in our life and unfortunately the routines can be prisons it can keep us stuck right and so sometimes we need a nudge to get out of that rut mm-hmm. you know a new perspective to help us do something new in our relationship and be creative and so this is a really great way of doing that you know, giving you an outside perspective. And most of the things in there, you know, are kind of like, wow, I, I never thought about that. That kind of sounds like fun, you know, and can't believe I didn't think of that already. Especially if you're in the middle of a fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's the most challenging if time. If you're I in think. the middle of a, a, some type of disagreement, especially if it's a long-term one, you know, not a, a really heated disagreement, but, you know, maybe you're at odds with, I don't know, making a big purchase or whatever, you know, and you, and that those kind of things kind of weigh you down more. You know, maybe you're like not looking forward to the holidays or seeing some family you have to go visit or something and throw that stuff in there, that, that teasing, that flirtingness. Um, it adds like this surprise element that stops your brain from going down that, that ugly place. And it's those simple little things that make us think badly. And it's also the simple little things that make us think better. I would say also for the guys out there, it would be important for you to separate flirting with initiating sex. Yes. It, just to be very clear you know, to your partner that you are flirting with her because you just want to connect. You just want to have fun with her and you're not putting any pressure on her, right? So try not to pair the two. Now, if you're going to initiate sex, you're initiating sex and that's, you know, completely different. Um, have different moves, I guess. I don't know what, <laughs> what, what else to say, but you know, don't, if you're going to go up and you're going to give a little pat on her bottom or something like that, don't make that into something more. Mm-hmm but it's just flirting. It's just connecting with her. You're letting her know that you, you know, think she's fun and, and you enjoy her company. And the same thing is true in the opposite direction. I know the guys really appreciate a little bit of attention as well. And not just, you know, the typical, here's a sandwich, you know, or whatever ways that we <laughs> take sandwich. care of you guys. That is, you know, not just the domesticated stuff, but also like teasing and flirting kind of in kindness and nurture. Yeah, there was a there was a client of yours talking about sandwiches. I'm like getting hungry now, but <laughs> yeah, there was a client of yours that would take a bite out of her husband's sandwich, right? 
and wrap it up. And then he would go to work and open up his lunch and... <laughs> And he'd see a bite taken out of his sandwich and he'd know that she was thinking about him. And that's that's very cute, right? Yeah. And that's that's what we're talking about, this flirting um, and having fun with each other. Yeah, and doing it publicly is really fun too. So he's obviously having lunch with whoever he's working with, <laughs> that they're seeing this too and they're all getting a good little chuckle out of that. And those are the kind of things that have that ripple effect that, you know, maybe he he's thinking about it hours later and then comes home and mentions it or something and kind of gives a little bit all day of connection. Yeah. Especially if you're disconnected mm -hmm. for the day. Yeah. You know, like for him, he was at work and, you know, they don't see each other throughout mm -hmm. the day. It, those those little connection points are, are really important. And, you know, flirting and having fun is just this icing on the cake. Yeah. One of the things that we did... Um, it's not really flirting, but eh, it's fun. But, you know, our daughter-in-law was with us on the weekend. Angie, if you join us on our Tuesday night call, she's our MC mm -hmm. on our live calls. And uh, her husband, who is our son, Alec, we had him show up on the weekend, you know, for one of the final evening of the of the weekend and she was so surprised and she was so happy and she was really missing him. And, and that was a really great thing that made all of us feel good to see. It was beautiful. So really, if you think about flirting as a way of being extra, uh, extra attentive for no reason. With some fun. With playfulness. With playfulness. Yeah. And do not pair it with initiating sex. Right. Like so underline that. Yeah, one. let's let's put out a challenge. Find a creative way to flirt with your partner and let us know what you did. Yeah. That would be fun. That would be fun. And funny. You know, that would be how would they let us know? Because if it was on the Tuesday night call, other people could see it, which would be really fun. If it was through email, we'd have to mention it on another show. Either yeah, way. It, anyway, I mm -hmm. mean, you can email us at contact at couplesynergy.com or can put something on our Facebook page. Oh, yeah. Right? Couple we also Synergy have community. a community. Yeah, we have a, a group also, mm -hmm. uh, Couple Synergy Community um, on Facebook. If you want to join that, that would be awesome as well. Um, there's just many ways to, to interact with us, mm -hmm. and we, we'd love to hear from you guys. Yeah. So we want to thank you so much for joining us today and for listening to Couples Synergy. Our passion is in helping couples and people have happy and healthy relationships. And this podcast gives us a fun way of bringing our knouledge and expertise to you, our listeners. And if you know someone who could benefit from this episode, please download it and share it. And thank you for listening. For all of you listening, please subscribe to our podcast and please leave us a review. If you have any questions, comments, or topic suggestions, please email us at contact at couplesynergy.com. For more information about Couple Synergy and our programs such as the Couples Weekend Intensive and our premier program called Couple to Couple, look us up online at couplesynergy.com. Until next time, synergize your life and synergize your love. You have been listening to Couple Synergy with Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. Couple Synergy was recorded, edited, and produced by Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. Voiceover and music entitled Breathe and Let Go was recorded and composed by Gina Gonzalez.